The Ghost in the Basement This story happened many years ago when I was a boy in a small town in Pennsylvania. It was a unique day, Friday, October 13th, 2000. Friday the 13th, a day of bad luck and superstition, combined with a full moon, the time when people act the craziest. My friend Mark lived one block down the street from me. After school, we would often play together. On that day, we were at Mark's house, and we were bored. We were tired of our usual games of pretending to be soldiers, using hockey sticks as rifles and pine cones as grenades. We wanted some real adventure. With Halloween only a few weeks away, our minds were on all things spooky and mysterious. One of us mentioned the abandoned house down the alley. There was a rumor about that house. Some other neighborhood kids said that they had looked in a basement window and seen a shirt hanging on a clothesline. Hanging in the shirt was a ghost. I wasn't sure if I believed this, but it still made my heart race to think about. We wandered down the alley toward the house just to take a look. I had passed it many times, but never looked at it closely. It was a two-story house with dirty white siding. There was no fence around the property. The grass was unmowed. A large garage with boarded-up windows stood between the alley and the house. An ancient sycamore tree towered over the backyard. We returned to Mark's house and went into the garage, away from all adult ears, to come up with a plan. I would go home and eat dinner, then return so we could go to the abandoned house after dark. I needed a flashlight, so I took the one my dad kept next to his bed. At dusk, we stood in Mark's backyard. My black sweatshirt kept me warm in the cooling air. A light breeze swirled dried leaves. A plastic pumpkin lit up a neighbor's porch. The rising full moon hung low in the sky, occasionally obscured by clouds. We could see the lights of the high school football stadium a few blocks away. We made our way down the alley in the darkness, staying silent. Mark walked into the yard, but I hesitated. That first step into the grass would be the point of no return. Just then, I heard cheers from the football stadium. I heard the echoing voice of the announcer. I heard the drums of the marching band. I took a deep breath, and I stepped into the yard and followed Mark. He was waiting next to the tree trunk. I joined him, then we scampered over to the house. We lay down next to the basement window. Inside, it was pitch black. Mark said he would count down and then we would turn on our flashlights. I held my flashlight close to the window and shuddered as my hand touched spider webs. Three, two, one. Our lights went on and I immediately jumped back. Just inside the window was a face staring back at us. I didn't wait for Mark. I took off running across the yard. When I reached the alley, I ran straight home and into my bedroom where I sat to catch my breath and calm down. The image was burned into my mind. What had I just seen? What happened to Mark? What about the ghost in the shirt? That night, I slept with the light on. Over the years, Mark and I talked about that night only a few times. At first, he claimed that he had seen both the face and the ghost hanging in the shirt, but he later admitted that he hadn't seen anything. When I yelled and jumped up, he had just followed me, not knowing why I was running. I never returned to that house, and it was eventually torn down. In its place is a well-kept yard without even a dip where the basement used to be. This is David B. Thanks for listening.